Hi, Anastasia. How are you? Hi, Carolyn. I'm great. I'm just wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very, very excited to talk to you. Equally excited this side of the pond. Can you tell us where you are, Anastasia, where you live? Sure. I live just outside of Chicago uh, in the States, of course, um, about a 30 minute drive on a good day <laughs> without the traffic um, from the city. I can remember seeing your name because I love your name. And I did feel there was something very Latin or Greek in it when I used to look at it in academy days. Um, so am I right? Would you be part of that academy family from 2008, 9, 10? Yes, yes. That's, that's where this all started and that's how we met. And um, yeah, I was, a, I was a big, I was very active back back in, in the day. So I'm so happy that we are still connecting. Absolutely. Um, I've reconnected with several uh, LinkedIn members now from Academy Days, and it's rather nice to see where the journey has taken us. Mm -hmm. so looking at the journey, tell us how you started in brand designing and how you become who you are today. Oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> Um, how I started in branding was, it was kind of a fluke, really. Um, at the time, I was working as an administrative assistant for AT&T, which is one of the largest um, digital and telephone companies here in the States. And I was working as a temp. And I had not gone to college yet. I just moved here from Ohio, which is where I was born. And um, so I was supporting a team of six at the time. And I always, you know, I did a lot of things for them, but what I did most and what I kind of got caught up in doing was the PowerPoint documents. And now granted, this was just when Macs were available um, retail for everyone and they, they all used to comment, boy, you really put a lot into that, you know, into the PowerPoint. Um, we see that you really like the PowerPoint, you know, all this. And it just sort of organically grew from there when I found out that I could actually do this as a living. And I, I was I was so excited and so happy that this was something that was available to me. So that's where it was born. So you're highly creative. I mean, even looking at your room there, you will see the artistic flavor is very much a part of your world. So yeah. tell us how you implemented that creativity within PowerPoint and onwards. Um, with, well, it's funny when I look back now, uh, <laughs> since I'm seasoned now, when I look back at some of the work that I did, it's it's hilarious actually because you have such a breadth of i mean in in the 20 years now that it's been 19 years that it's been um so much has changed and i and i look at these powerpoint documents and 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 they were fine but i would have done it so differently now you know after having gone to to, you know, to college and learn from other professionals. So I almost never work in PowerPoint now unless a client needs it, of course. Um, these days I'm working in Adobe Creative Suite, Illustrator, Photoshop, uh, all of the Adobe Creative Suite um, uh, products, so yeah. It's wonderful memories of PowerPoint. I remember being asked to do um, what they call an away day for landowners here, they were Welsh Development Agency, and therefore they were a mixture of uh, admins, um, executives, finance, etc. Okay. So um, I'm, I've always been a person that I, I will, it's a nodding dog, you know, if somebody says, well, will you do this? I usually end up going like this. Sure. <laughs> well, it's a nodding dog. So <laughs> I didn't realize what I would be in for, I just went. And I was taken to Cardiff because um, they had a prestigious building. I was warned 
that um, I probably would have a few comments made to me as a stranger coming into the building. So I go in and indeed, yes, I found that a lot of them were wondering who I was, what I was doing then, how dare I enter their private <laughs> place. <laughs> but I was asked by the president of the Chamber of Commerce, who was their boss. So he was very clever, okay. me in there like a mole to realize I would need to have some information about the team to do the away day. Sure. Mm -hmm. so what did Carolyn Williams do? And similar to what Anastasia did was give a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> and I can remember, and it is funny if you look back on what you did, you're popping the cork in terms of celebrating something and doing um, the traits, the personality traits of people with their passive, aggressive, et cetera, et cetera, and having characters up to mm -hmm. assimilate that. Well, of course, they, re they realized that they would see themselves within an aggressive or a passive. So there's quickly uh, faces that were looking at me and I was thinking, oh, I really dropped myself in this. <laughs> and I quickly got myself out of it by saying, right, we'll, we'll look at the creativity part and um, either, you know, act, so it's drama or sing. And little did I realize that all the executives, every executive in that building, um, decided to vote to sing not to do anything else but to sing and they were amazing oh my gosh they were absolutely Great. amazing wow. and so my bacon was saved <laughs> nice the PowerPoint and presentation that's great and that's what that is true true creativity there <laughs> you know creativity is as you well know not always something that you see or draw or you know create it's how you uh work in certain situations yeah, yeah. Um, that's great pivoting <laughs> right exactly so when you look at it now and yes you are right i mean look looking at your work one of the things that drew me to your brand and logo was the rose it's a beautiful rose tell us about the rose well, I chose the rose to represent my company. And now before I had um, something different, which was just a, a triangle, um, because that has a lot of meaning in and of itself, a very strong base and I'm moving upward. Um, and that's what I chose when I was just starting out. But that now that I'm seasoned, I, I wanted an update. And so I chose the rose um, for a couple of reasons. One, because I'm a gardener and I, and I enjoy being in the garden and being in nature and hiking and all of that. Um, but also because of what the rose symbolizes, which is I, I'm always looking for that one, um, that one design that actually does the trick. So as a designer, I, I, I do, I, I um, pencil sketch a lot and I sketch out a lot of brainstorming little thumbnail sketches, trying to figure out what's working and what's not when I'm creating a logo. And you just sort of, it's a feeling when you start to see a pattern coming up from that paper. And it lit, for me, it literally just rises right up off of the, the sketchbook pages and you start to see the pattern and then you work with it more and more and then boom, there's your perfect rose. So I believe that there's a, there's a perfect um, you know, design, there's a perfect logo, one that really works and, and it's there, I just have to uncover it. So that's why I chose that's why I chose the uh, the rose to symbolize that now. It's symbolized and it's it was attractive to me um, because of your name. And what's the name of your company? Insight Design Solutions. The solutions is a vital part of any business. It is. It is, and that's that's what I I work to provide. You know, our communication solutions. So who are your um, ideal customers? So my ideal customers right now, there are about four sectors. Um, one is uh, anyone that is manufacturing. So 
any gizmo, it doesn't matter, but as long as they're a manufacturer. Um, and then another would be app developers. I've, I've recently gotten into the, the other side of the rainbow, which is coding. And um, so I'm learning, I've learned Xcode and app development, but I'm not strong enough yet. I'm not, um, I'm not quite there yet. I wanna do a lot more review, but UX and UI, I feel really uh, powerful with. So app developers, those people that I can help with UX, UI, um, manufacturers, um, let me see how else. Um, oh, NGOs. Um, that's something that I want to do more of. I've done a little bit of in the past, um, but I want to do more for NGOs and nonprofits. Um, and there's anyone else? I can't think of who it would be. So those three, I know there's one more, but I can't think of it. <laughs> I'll let you know. Your personality and your energy speaks volumes to me. And uh, there is a lovely lady equal to you in terms of the artistic and creative part of what we've discussed on American Real. And I became a mentor on American Real because I got trained in London Real. The founder of American Real, who's living in New York, is called Roger Brooks. And Roger had been uh, mentored by Brian Rose, the founder of London Real. So I was on Facebook, similarly to when we got connected, and Roger was on Facebook saying, oh, you know, I've seen you in London Real, would you like to join American Real? And so I did. And as a result of that, there was a lovely lady in your um, industry called Cassandra Sanguine. And I've become very close to her because she actually helped me deal with MailChimp and Instagram because she's sure. quite, a, yeah, and she's on Instagram and has thousands of followers, so very gifted. But she started, it's called Profit Academy. So she's got this um, academy that, that obviously is non-profit from her point of view. But okay. it's I think the first thing I thought of was I'm going to connect the two of you because th there is a synergy there and a loveliness. That's fantastic. I would love to meet her. I yeah. would love to meet her. Yeah, I love connections and, cal and uh, collaborations. And she's love. from New Jersey. So don't forget, I'm not, you know, savvy with everywhere, but she's from New Jersey. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll I would love to meet her. The yeah. one giggle that you and I had behind the scenes was about the question that I was going to ask you as a serial entrepreneur, digital entrepreneur, as to who you felt comfortable being as a digital entrepreneur. Were you somebody that was a starter? Were you somebody that was a spotlight entrepreneur, digital entrepreneur? Or were you a signature digital entrepreneur? I, uh, if I had to pick one, well, it, it really, it really depends on which portion of it you're speaking of. So I think that in terms of knowing, um, in terms of being on in different um, social media programs, so I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn, you know, um, so I'm very involved. Um, but that said, I don't take my own advice, um, which I give my clients, which is um, to post every day, to you know, really just continuously be there in front of your audience. So that's where I've, I've let myself down really. Um, since COVID began, I've pretty much stopped that, which, um, so I have to get back on it. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> You got so much to offer that I think COVID um, is an ideal time for you to reach customers and, and the sort that you, you've already described and people like Cassandra equally because you're focused on creating your world. There is a bigger world out there that needs your solutions. So there's, there's my encouragement to you. Who, yeah. who would you say has been your biggest inspiration? Are there one, one person or a couple of people that have been quite influential in your career? There, um, 
there have been, within my career, there have been so many people that I couldn't possibly list them. Um, Well, let's see, two people stand out. One is a professor that I had in college. Um, His name is Robert Meyer. He's just wonderful. He's always been so supportive. And so he not only has, you know, taught the trade, taught, um, I think I took um, photography and page layout um, design from him back in college, but he always pushed us to experience things beyond, you know, beyond the actual work. And that was an incredible lesson for me because um, he helped me Um, I I had the opportunity to, well, let me go back a little bit. I was um, at the end, at the last, I think it was the last semester in college, I worked um, in an internship for Alligator Records, which is um, an American uh, blues record label. And that was more than I, it was so much fun, Carolyn. It was just wonderful because I love music and I love being surrounded by music. So I was able to learn the the craft that I do and then also just hear this amazing music. And these these superstars, uh, they would just come in the back door and they would start jamming with, you know, with their guitars and the two mentors that I had who, um, to this day, I'm very, very still close to to one of them, um, David, um, and uh, it, it was a, just a great time. So anyway, it, w- what happened was my professor um, sort of nudged me um, to take advantage of this possibility that I had, which was to interview. Lonnie Brooks, who is just a legend, a, an absolute legend here in the States um, for blues music. And so I did that and it was an amazing time. It was just great. Um, so for me, I love doing, I love doing what I do, but I, I really truly believe that it's the serendipitous um, kind of meetings that you have outside of the work you know, that adds to the work. Yeah. And yeah, so that's, um, that's one. And I would have to say, um, my father would be another, he didn't di- directly, um, you know, help me with my business or anything, but he was an entrepreneur. Um, he was born in Greece, a tiny little village in Lafka. He used to cook for his family, very large family. And, um, so he moved to the States. He did not know English. He, um, he learned the language and he opened up his own restaurant. I know it's crazy. A Greek that owns a restaurant, but he, he was very successful. And, um, and he really just, he taught me authentic authenticity, uh, because that's what he knows. And he was just, he didn't, want to be American. I mean, he was American, an American Greek citizen, but um, he brought Greece to America. And um, so he's very authentic. And so that um, feeling of being real, of really being who you are, um, is a part of me too. And my mom was also an entrepreneur. She, um, she did a catering business. She had a catering business. And really, I just take a I, I sort of feed off of a lot of people. So I take a little bit from a lot of wonderful people that I know. Great role modeling and very uh, physical. The lessons that you've explained there are physical ones that you were as a college student and then having the introduction to celebrity. And then that becomes quite a, as you said, it's a serendipity and it's quite spiritual as well because yes. you're actually growing as personal development as a person and what matters to you. So thank you for sharing that, that's, that's amazing. It's Friday and Friday's happy day. 
usually happy day when yeah. we're working and everybody sort of comes back and wants to just relax. And, and so where would you say is your happy place? Uh, my happy place is um, without doubt when I'm walking in, we have a forest preserve pretty close to us and I lose myself in nature. I just, that's, that's when I truly relax. It's when I can really let it, just let it all fight, fade away. And so I do uh, walk quite a bit there. And sometimes my husband comes with me and we just walk. Sometimes we don't talk. We just kind of just take it on, take it all in. And it's, and it's amazing that the things that you start to see when you stop looking, if that makes sense. Yes. So I love that. That's my happy place. What does your husband do? What's his work? Um, he's a systems analyst and um, engineer now for an airline. And uh, so he's definitely on the IT side. Right. Yeah. And a lot of what he does sort of um, helped me also with the X code because I never understood what he was talking about <laughs> um, because it was all IT and that's not my world. My world is color and texture and, um, you know, I can see everything immediately. Um, with coding, which I've now learned, it's just, um, I don't know. It's, it's completely different, but it's still so wonderful because you, there's a delayed satisfaction. You know, you have to really, it, it's like, uh, I don't know, I can't, I can't, it's hard for me to describe it. Um, working on something, I guess, for me, the experience is like working on something in a dark room and then after months and months, you turn on the light and you can actually see what you've created. And um, it's challenging, but I love it as much. Yeah. So he kind of, that's another example of, you know, in what people leave with me. Yeah. Yeah. The dark room is a great analogy. And then when it, the negativity, the, the development from that, and then you've got the finished product and that's so rewarding. Yeah. Thank it you is. so much for sharing lots of little nuggets there. Mm -hmm. I've been really blessed today to have people who are in such creative professions and who are obviously in love with what they do, which makes okay. us a better world and a happier world. Absolutely. I'm so happy that we've had a chance to talk and I'm so happy that you invited me. Thank you so much. It's, it's a big honor for me. I just adore you. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Like, there's a lovely feeling to have too. Equally, it's a touche for you too. <laughs> Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend and enjoy your walks. Thank you. I will. You too. Speak to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.